If you have gone through our previous video lectures on this channel, following concepts should be clear to you. These are primary and secondary antibodies, reporter enzymes, immunoassays such as ELISA, and STS page. I have covered basic principle of STS page and its application in our second channel. Please go through it once if this technique is new to you. Link is given in the description of this video. Western blotting is a widely used technique for the detection and analysis of proteins. Blot refers to the membrane on which biological molecules such as proteins and nucleic acids are immobilized. The process of transferring macromolecules from a gel to a membrane, followed by their detection on the membrane, is known as Blotting. When the macromolecule involved is DNA, the technique is known as Southern blotting. Southern is the last name of the scientist who first blotted DNA. Sir Edwin Mellor Southern. By analogy, blotting involving RNA is known as Northern blotting. And for protein, this technique is known as Western blotting. Western blotting is also known as immunoblotting. This is because antibody probes are utilized for the detection of the target protein on the membrane. There are five main steps involved in Western blotting. These are protein gel electrophoresis, protein transfer, blocking, antibody probing, and detection. Let's understand each of these steps in detail. The first step in Western blotting involves separation and characterization of proteins by gel electrophoresis. Suppose we have three protein samples. Let's say these samples have been prepared by extracting proteins from plant, bacteria, and fungi respectively. Each of these samples contains thousands of proteins. Our aim is to detect presence of a specific protein in these samples. These protein samples are separated into their component proteins by gel electrophoresis. Most widely used technique for protein electrophoresis is sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, abbreviated as STS page. This technique sets proteins according to their molecular weights. Another important point is that, all the separated proteins in the gel have uniform negative charge. This is because of sodium dodecyl sulfate, which coats the proteins. So, this is our polyacrylamide gel after STS page. The bands shown here represents proteins present in each sample. The leftmost plane of the gel is representing the molecular weight markers. Once proteins have been separated by STS page, next step is to transfer these proteins from the gel to a suitable membrane. The membranes used in Western blotting are those having high affinity for proteins. They have excellent protein binding and retention capabilities. Most commonly used membranes in Western blotting are nitrocellulose and polyvinylethane AD fluoride, abbreviated as PVDF. Now question here is, what is the need for this transfer? Protein transfer is done for further detection and analysis of separated proteins. The membranes are thinner than gels. Therefore, when proteins bind to these membranes, their epitopes or binding sites are easily accessible to the antibodies. Let's understand how protein transfer takes place. The method used to transfer proteins from gel to membrane is known as electrophoretic transfer. In this method, electric current is used to elute proteins from gel and transfer them to membranes. The gel and the membrane are placed in the electrophoresis chamber such that gel is at the side of negative electrode and membrane is at the side of positive electrode. We know that proteins in the gel are negatively charged. So, 
they move out of the gel and migrate towards the positive electrode. For protein transfer, a stack or transfer sandwich of gel and membrane is prepared first. This sandwich also consists of sponge and filter paper. The arrangement of sandwich is like this. Sponge. Filter paper. Gel. Membrane. Filter paper again, followed by sponge. Filter paper provides a uniform flow of transfer buffer through the gel. This facilitates the movement of proteins out of the gel and onto the membrane. And the sponge maintain the proper pressure during the transfer. This sandwich of gel and membrane is held inside a non-conducting cassette which keep gel and the membrane in close contact. This complete setup is kept entirely submerged under transfer buffer within a buffer tank. The placement of cassette is such that, gel is at the side of negative electrode. Membrane is at the side of positive electrode. When electric current is applied, the negatively charged proteins move from gel and travel toward the membrane which is at the side of positive electrode. One very important component of transfer buffer is methanol. Methanol helps to increase the binding of proteins to the membrane. This is because during the transfer of protein from gel to membrane methanol removes STS from proteins. At the end of this step, all the proteins from gel move to the membrane and become tightly attached to it. So, we have a membrane with copy of band pattern from gel. The third step is known as blocking. Now as we said, the membranes have a very high affinity for proteins. Our next step will be the addition of antibody to find out the presence of target protein. But antibodies are also proteins. That means, they can bind to empty spaces on the membrane, where no protein bands are present. This non-specific binding of antibodies to the membrane is detrimental to the specificity and sensitivity of the assay. Therefore, it is essential to block spaces that are not already occupied by proteins. So, in this step, blocking agent is added to the membrane. Most common blocking agents used are bovine serum albumin and non-fat milk. These blocking agents will fill all the unoccupied sites on the membrane. Since these blocking agents specifically bind the membrane, they will not disturb the already bound proteins on the membrane. Next step is antibody probing. After the blocking step, the membrane is incubated with primary antibody. Since this antibody is specific to our target protein, it will bind to the protein on the membrane. After this, excess of primary antibodies are removed by washing. Final step of western blotting is the detection, followed by further analysis of the protein. The membrane is now incubated with labeled secondary antibody. Here we need to understand that, we could have used labeled primary antibody in the previous step. And that would have resulted in direct detection of the target protein. But use of secondary antibodies are preferred to maximize the sensitivity of the detection. Multiple secondary antibodies can bind to the target primary antibody and, this results in the amplification of detection signal. We have already discussed this concept in the lecture on primary and secondary antibody. So, when the membrane is incubated with labeled secondary antibody, these antibodies bind to the primary antibody, that is already bound to the target protein on the membrane. Excess of secondary antibodies are also removed by washing. As we said, the secondary antibody is labeled. Let's say, our label here is an enzyme. Most preferred enzyme for protein detection in western blotting is, horseradish peroxidase. In the next step, the presence of this enzyme is detected by adding a suitable substrate. HRP acts on colorimetric or chemiluminescent substrates. 
Let's say, the membrane is incubated with a colorimetric substrate such as fork hole or one naft hole. The enzyme in the membrane catalyzes the oxidation of this substrate into an insoluble purple product. And this purple color is visible on a blot. Thus, the target protein is detected. And as we can see here, the target protein is present only in sample 1. Thus, we now understand that, Western blotting is a technique in which, proteins separated by gel electrophoresis are transferred onto a membrane. And then the proteins are identified and analyzed.